Fridge cam, this is fridge cam, this is how we start our fridge cams now. Not allowed to do that anymore, Jamie. Welcome to fridge cam now, welcome to fridge cam. I'm not allowed to sing anymore and I'm really sorry that I sang, but I'm also really sorry for the title of the video because Ben's misled everyone. No, I think they are Christmas treats, because yeah. I think Brussels sprouts are awesome treats yeah. and they're perfect for Christmas. But you clicked on this video for one reason and not to look at Brussels sprouts. We were given the challenge of making Brussels sprouts interesting, more exciting, and to trick people into eating them, especially those who don't like them. And we failed. They were very different. I'm not sure they were all failures. Yeah, because Captain Kino here got <laughs> well into it. Well, I was going to go for something a bit sophisticated. So if you're going to do it, you might as well do it properly. So a nice little canapé. I made uh, a roux sauce out of, uh, we turned to a bechamel, a bit of cheese, parmesan, some shredded Brussels sprouts, which I parboiled off, um, so nice and soft, but not overcooked, not that farty smell. Then I blended the whole lot into a quite thick paste um, and folded that into some egg whites, what is essentially a Brussels sprout mousse. Let that chill down, pipe it onto some little crostinis and finish it with bacon and walnut. If that is not the perfect Brussels sprout canapé, I don't know what it is. Oh, it sounds really exciting, Ben. Meanwhile, I took the right route, which was to make them interesting. Now, what do people like? People like curry. What else do people like? People like stuff that's been fried. People don't like Brussels sprouts. So I thought, two against one, you're gonna like it. I took Brussels sprouts, I put them into a pakora batter. It's half a teaspoon of everything, can't really go wrong. Cool, that curry powder comes out quick. And then I deep fried them on a lollipop stick, so you had little deep fried lollipop Brussels sprouts curry. They look impressive. Good idea, um, I quite like that, it's a little canopy party. Exactly. I'd serve those up. I think Whereas I, Hey, the wrong Brussels. end of the stick. Shut up. <laughs> Brussels sprouts, it's Christmas time. You associate Christmas with little Ferrero Rochers. So I was thinking, why not just cover up the, the taste with chocolate and hazelnut? So I got my Brussels sprouts, I boiled them, I halved them, ho hollowed them out, and inside I put Nutella with a, hazel a whole hazelnut, stuck them together, coated them in wafer and chocolate and hazelnut, and uh, waited for them to dry. It looks like a massive rabbit has come along and taken a dump on a baking tray. I will stab you, go away. <laughs> By the time you'd wrap them back up in the wrappers, yeah, yeah, that was cool. slightly deceptive. Yeah, they were. That's the whole point. The main thing to remember here is that not all surprises have to be good ones. <laughs> Three very different approaches to Brussels sprouts. The question was, we couldn't decide a winner, so we had to get Barry in, who does like Brussels sprouts he the best of like times. Yes. Um, so, well, let's see what he thought. Right, so Baz, what I've gone for, right? People don't like Brussels sprouts, but what people do like is curry. So just think, deep fried, curry spices, a little treat in the middle. Really <laughs> hot. <laughs> Too much curry. <laughs> so what you've done, mm -hmm. you take what's well, essentially a pocket of fart, covered in curry, <laughs> which does what? <laughs> Makes you fart. So they're gonna burn the way out. <laughs> they're okay, but they still taste the Brussels sprouts. They don't quite do the job. I still like them because I like Brussels sprouts. So I'm still winning here. Now, at the Christmas table, Brussels sprouts are often served with bacon and walnuts, but I've taken them off of the Christmas table and into the canopy so you can really focus on the flavors before you sit down to your meal. Try it. It's a Brussels sprout mousse. What he's done is he's drawn me in because they look amazing. There's not much taste to them as a, as a mousse. I've Light, the, the bacon, yeah. lots of air. <laughs> exactly nothing. <laughs> We're trying to disguise mm. the flavour of Brussels sprout here. No, it's nice. They're nothing. They're subtle. Nice. They're good. That's nice. So no surprise here. Ben has succeeded. Now onto the final one. Now. Yeah. What's your favourite thing in the world? Chocolate. Exactly. So what I've decided to do here. I've taken a Brussels sprout. Oh. Wait, I've hollowed it out. I've put Nutella inside, a hazelnut, covered it in wafer chocolate, and then covered that with chocolate and hazelnut. Oh, Look, you never, you, know. Know. <laughs> you never know. You can make a little pyramid, don't you? can make you? kids eat them. Oh, they're, they're really cold. Oh, they've been in the fridge. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> we had, hey, we're oh, no. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for the biggest one, so there you go. That's how much faith I have in this. Terrible idea. Cheers. 
That's not nice. That's not nice. After taste, <laughs> Herrero Roche. So, I won then. Nah. Well, I think you won. I definitely didn't win, but you I definitely say that. didn't. I think win. yours was definitely out of the box thinking. I thought when we started this, I thought it was let's be experimental, and I was experimental. I didn't think it was a competition to see who could do the most sophisticated thing in the whole world. It ended up in us all gagging though. From one festive ingredient, sprouts, to another, we had two on our website this week. What were they, Jay? We had our mulled wine duck, which is fantastic if you love mulled wine and duck, because it combines duck and mulled wine. And more Brussels sprouts, which and we shredded up to make it, so again, disguising them. And the second recipe was something sweet, our Christmas panettone pudding. Oh, that was it. That was the bready, kind of yeah. Italian, purple. cakey, purple one. Yes, yeah, a bit like summer pudding with berries, but we put in seasonal fruit. So it's winter. So it's more Christmassy. And but sticking... And sticking with our drink theme, last week we had eggnog. We did. This week we did our mulled wine for duck. We also did a festive drink of... Hot mocha chocolate. At the table. Made. I made that at the table for Taste Made, and I enjoyed that one immensely. And, excuse me, my biscuits that I made were fantastic. They're amazing. Little candid. <laughs> Plus, a really cool little tip to serve with the hot chocolate mocha, but you're going to have to go and watch the video to find out what that is. Our recipe this week for feel good food was brunch cocotte. So, Ben, Jamie, and Ruth Crilly uh, were in that video. Check that out because um, that was delicious. It was a healthy version of sort of an English breakfast, wasn't it? Yeah, I was nabbing some of that at the end of it. Mike, were you going to say that Ruth was delicious in that oh, video? Yeah, my, it nearly came out. How's the songwriting going, Mike? Brilliantly. Yeah, do you need any help with inspiration for like Actually, yeah, I could lyrics do. and stuff? It's Christmas themed music at the moment. All so. right. Fridge cam. Da -da 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 -da. Fridge cam. Da -da 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 -da. All I want for fridge cam is you. Fridge cam is coming to town. Oh yeah. Oh little town of fridge cam. Once in fridge cam, Mike looked happy. Little fridge cam. Little fridge cam. Fridge cam songs. Fridge cam songs. Fridge cam songs. Oh, ow.